enough. We've got a quorum, so we're, we should be good to go. Okay. Go for it. All right. Good evening, and welcome to our Tuesday Finance Committee meeting. We will uh, be going over a uh, reserve fund transfer. That was the original intent of the meeting. Um, and throughout the month, uh, we will keep the the Warren article discussion um, on the agenda as we meet so we can finalize any um, last minute agreements so that we can recommend articles that we have left hanging out there. Um, some of those will probably be wait to the very last meeting before town meeting, just the ones that require uh, a little bit of attention to detail on last minute numbers. Um, we'll, if we have any public, we'll have public input, uh, member updates, we'll try to approve the previous meeting minutes, and then we'll adjourn. So um, I would like to knock out the reserve fund transfer first. So um, everybody I know we looked at it last meeting and hopefully had a chance to I look it over if you have any discussion, we can have it now or we can uh, look for a motion. I make a motion to approve the trust fund, I'm sorry, the, uh, the uh, reserve fund transfer in the amount of, Steve, can you help me there with the amount? 95,842.56. Thank you, Steve. Second. Right. <laughs> Motion's been made, seconded. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. I, actually, I think we have to do a roll call. So, Steve. <laughs> aye. I'm a yes. Tyler. Yes. Jerry. Yes. Al. Yes. Tom, we're voting on the reserve fund transfer. If you want yes. To. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Greg, if you can hear me, we're voting on the reserve fund transfer we spoke to. If you have any questions. Yeah, no. Um, you're muted. <laughs> it's a yes. All right. It's a yes. <laughs> it is unanimous. Thank you for coming in. All right. So that's out of the way. Um, let's get into a little bit of the Warren article discussion really quick. Um, I, I hope everybody received Alicia's um, <laughs> work, a lot of work. <laughs> you, you did. Um, got, a, got a lot of answers to some of the questions that we had. Um, and mailed that out to us in blue. So some of the articles that I know that our board brought up, we had a few issues we wanted to wait uh, to vote on. She was able to get some more information. Um, I can speak specifically, I guess, or Alicia, if you want to speak specifically to any of the information you've collected, um, we'll save the... Um, Quickly, we'll save the, the senior, ce senior center one till the end. Um, sure. Before we even get into that, I, I did just want to mention, we're going to meet uh, jointly with the select board um, on Monday. Um, reason being, and then that's a 6.30 meeting, uh, and that'll be in person. The meet, reason being is LLB will be at that meeting to answer any questions and give a presentation. So I think it, it's a perfect time. Yeah. For us to attend um so hopefully you can be there uh just at least um if you can't um definitely watch it because hopefully that'll be filled with a lot of information that we were looking for um and in discussions last week i'll have to get back to you for sure it's my 30th wedding anniversary Whoa. on monday <laughs> you got me <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> yeah, I, I, we're not going to do any um voting on that like i said we're going to hold definitely that particular article we'll probably hold to the the 28th of april the very last meeting we hold so um i don't expect it's more of informational and questions so will it be recorded absolutely oh yeah absolutely okay. so we'll you'll be able to definitely review it that way um i just want to get that out of the way so everybody knew next week's a little bit of an off week and then we'll jump back into probably our next meeting will be the one at the end of the month where we hopefully can uh, wrap things up for town meeting. So, all right, Alicia, sorry. No problem. I'm going to promote Steve Mark so that he can be a panelist and speak to the article, the revolving fund for the schools. 
Yeah, I, I almost emailed Steve and said, um, <laughs> Steve, I was going to say, you, you probably don't need to come. You did such a wonderful job explaining it in your, in your email. Um, it's kind of what I thought it was for, but um, go ahead. If, if anybody didn't have a chance to read what the PACE program is, um, and I know some of us had some questions on that Article 21 regarding um, school committee appropriation for expenses incurred in providing education for such non-resident or foster care students or to take any other action and related thereto. So um, it's basically the acceptance of a non-residential tuition revolving fund is what it is. And Steve, I'll let you speak, or Steve, excuse me, Dave, I'll let you speak to it if you would like just a little bit. To, and anyone have any questions of that, please go ahead. Excuse me, Steve, did I call you Dave? Um, yeah, so I was confused. So <laughs> I'm sorry. Good evening, everyone. I think I know most people. Um, hey, Tyler, how are you? Long time no see. Good to you. Um, so, um, yeah, so this is uh, really just uh, what the explanation is. So uh, we have a, an opportunity um, in the PACE program. Which the, so the PACE program is a program that's for postgraduate uh, students who are gra technically graduated but need transition services. Um, technically, we're responsible for, for um, these students until they reach the age of 22. And so this is a transition program. It's, a, it's kind of like a life skills program. Um, so they, they take them shopping. They take them, um, you know, lots of different things to help them transition from the high school to possibly living on their own or possibly, um, you know, life after high school, structured high school environment. So uh, we've been developing this program in Littleton for a couple of years. Um, we have the, uh, we, we were approached um, for the, the um, director of pupil services, Lynn Snow, was approached by um, a couple of different towns uh, at the beginning of the school year uh, when they heard that we had this program. Uh, they have students in their town and they don't have that kind of program available to them. And so they wanted to um, send their, uh, a couple of students to our program. We had the capacity at that point in time. So uh, they worked out a tuition agreement. I believe that tuition agreement, um, don't quote me on this, but I believe that's a rate that's uh, set and approved by um, the education department. Um, so because these are, it's not school choice because school choice is only uh, grades one through 12 uh, and for certain towns and you have to be uh, um, accepted into the school choice program by the superintendent, things like that. Uh, this is, it's not school choice. We actually checked with our attorney um, when we started all this and she said, no, you can't put the money in school choice. It's not the same. Um, so really this is just uh, so we can collect that tuition money, use that tuition money to help pay um, some of those program expenses uh, and we don't, honestly, we don't know how long this is going to last. So some of these students, um, some of the, some of the students that are from out of town, they may, may be with us just this year. They may elect to come back next year. Uh, they may, you know, they, it, it all depends. It depends on the pace that they're doing. Uh, it depends on the, uh, the achievement levels that they do. And then the, the team gets together and, and um, kind of assesses where they're at. So um that's kind of what it is. Obviously, if it's a little, if it's a Littleton student in the PACE program, obviously that's not tuition. That's you know paid by uh, the taxpayers. So this is just an opportunity right. because we have the capacity with the teaching staff at this point in time um, to accept those students into our program, collect a little bit of tuition. It's not much. It's like twenty seven thousand dollars for the year per student. Um, so it's not much. We're not talking a boatload of money. And we're not talking probably uh, something that's going to grow a lot um, over the next couple of years. It's a relatively small program. And in a couple of years, if these students all age out and, and uh, no other town is interested, we may not get any more revenues for it in a couple of years. So it's kind of a one, this could be a one or two year cycle kind of thing where we're just going to collect the tuition money and then use that to pay for uh, the expenses for that program. And we have to do it in a separate revolving fund called um, out of whatever we call it, out of non-resident tuition or something like that. So that's basically what this is. Okay. Right. Um, 
Thank you for that, Steve. I, I, my son was actually a benefactor of this program, and we, and we were blessed to have it in Littleton, so I didn't have to worry about the travel as much. But yeah, it's a it's a great program. They do a wonderful job with the with the student with the kids. Um, it's really a uh, it's really a life changing experience for them. Some of them come up to central office, and um, one of our staff members brings a puppy every once in a while, and it's. Been, uh, it becomes kind of a, pu a puppy therapy for this student as well. But um, the kids do really well. They're really making good progress um, in learning some life skills. And that's what it's all about. All right. I guess the only financial question I have is um, the tuition of where we're basically Littleton's just providing the classroom space, I'm assuming. And the funds of this tuition would be go to pay for the, well, the teacher or teachers and aides that are with this program, is that, that correct? Correct, correct. And, and uh, we use, um, you know, they, they might need a consultant, um, a behavior consultant to come in and work with the student, you know, things like that. So it's basically uh, salaries, expenses uh, for the program. And once those students age out of that program. Yep. You know, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll field some questions here. Go ahead, Greg. Yeah, two questions for you, Steve. Um, first question is by bringing in non-residents, does it impact the ability to serve all of our residents if the need arises? No, it does not. Okay. Absolutely not. And then the second question is, we're, we're charging uh, a tuition fee to these non-residents. In your estimation, is this a break even or is there uh, some that's funding a little bit more towards the town for some of the other students that are in this program or how, how's it working? Now? Yeah, right now it's going gonna, it's gonna to help subsidize um, a little bit, um, the cost that we have, not much, um, but um, some of these students kind of, it's, it's not quite a one-to-one -one program, but there's two teachers and there are four students in there right now. So, um, but they're, you know, they're, they take a lot of, uh, they take a lot of work. So, um, so it's, it's not something that we're going to rely on in the future to fund right. that program if, you know, we don't have any more out of district uh, residents coming in so um right so kind of like one-time funds we'll use it as one-time funds for expenses we won't build off of it and and build that into our budget at some point in time so that's not what, that's not what the intent is Got it. thanks steve and and um steve so this also when we have an in in town um student doing this program this um if we didn't have the program in town we would be paying the same thing, sending him somewhere yeah, else or her somewhere yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, um, as long as we have students in, if, in the if, program, it makes sense. Right, right. So, so right now, I think this. Don't quote me on the numbers. I think there's two Littleton residents and two non-residents in the program. Uh, the two non -re the two residents. If we did not have this program and had to send those out, those students out, uh, you're talking over two hundred thousand dollars. Uh, program costs uh, to send those students out. So um, we're, we're saving by having the program in house, and then we're we're being we're able to take advantage at least for a couple of years of tuitioning a couple of uh, students in um, to that program. And those, you know, they've worked out agreements with the towns that are sending them. Um, we have agreements in place for a set tuition amount. Um, so that's all set. So. Yeah. So now you, yeah. you raised another question, Steve. So <laughs> if we had to pay two hundred thousand to send somebody out, why are we only charging twenty seven to bring them in? Uh, transportation fees and everything. Yeah, else. you got transportation fees. You have, you know, we've already got the staff in because yeah. we're servicing Littleton students, and so because we have the capacity to take additional couple of students, we can do that. I see. Okay. Yeah, and Steve, it's been it's been interesting to see like the difference, right? I mean, I remember some of the costs we were paying for even single students out of district, right? And the amount of money we're saving bringing that stuff back in house is I mean, it's incredible, right? So oh it's, yeah, it's great yeah, to doing that. yeah. And out of district tuition rates have been skyrocketing like everything else these days. Um, so it's nice to be able to have those that program in house, and it's it's better for the kids, it's better for the students, right? Yeah. Hi, Steve Bonuti, by the way. How are you? How are you doing, Steve? <laughs> Good. 
right, if there's no other questions, Steve, I'll, I'll let you go. All right. Let Steve Steve Mark get me, so. <laughs> All right. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thanks, Bye. All right. I think you guys got to kick me off, right? Oh. That would be a Alicia, can you? Um, just to move on, so Alicia, the, the next article that we you got some information on um, just real quickly is the um, the Oak Hill Tower. I think we had some questions. Yes. So the cell towers, we've been meeting back and forth with town council and water and sewers town council. And then we reached out to DOR and we came to agreement that the other cell towers, because they're on water land, maintained by water land and purchased with enterprise fund water money, they are going to keep those. And I'm going to close those to the enterprise at the end of the year, except for Oak Hill. Oak Hill will stay in the general fund. We put a line in the budget so that they could spend 12 8 next year instead of the 13 one they thought, that, but they're okay with that $300 delta. And then we're going to try to create a stabilization fund with this article and then deposit funds once free cash has been certified during special time meeting. Makes sense to me. Anybody else have any questions on that? Okay. Like I said, we'll vote on these articles that we weren't able to at the end of the month, if that's okay with everybody. Does that make sense? So kind of knock them all out. Okay. Um, article, let's see. What else do we have? Um, we have 18, but that's still, we don't know if we're going to settle before right. you know, town meeting. Okay, what about... Bargaining. Yes. What about... Um, Robinson Road. Looks like we had a question on, on the Yeah, Robinson. so Steve had a great question on Robinson Road because <clears throat> I have a restriction on the sale of real estate that it has to go into a receipts reserve for appropriation. But per town council, uh, general law chapter 44, B section 7 allows anything, any proceeds from the disposal of real property required with CPA funds to go back to the CPA fund. Okay. That answers that. <laughs> that question that we had. So, um, any other questions regarding the Robinson Road proper? All right. Uh, collective bargaining. Okay. Anybody? Let's see. All right. Let's get to the big one. <laughs> Article 20, the big one. Yeah. Senior. So you had some bills of prior year that popped up? Oh, yeah. And oh. I did have bills of four bills from prior year that came in from. Um, ads that were posted for job fillings Saw that. they were from last year and they sent them now they're like these are outstanding well that's nice i wish we'd sent them earlier so we had to add four okay and you know what that's one of those um we'll probably wait as well we would anyway because sometimes we get another one in <laughs> and we end up having to do an insert so we'll just leave that um till the end of the month as well okay the um, changes, let us know. I know uh, since we met, uh, the select board met, um, they did a Monday morning meeting <laughs> at 8.30. Uh, Steve and I jumped on. I, I thought it was going to be an evening meeting. Unfortunately, it, <laughs> it wasn't. But um, And we gave them kind of the discussion that we all had um, from the previous week on our concerns on recommending this article. Um, I think we made it clear that we weren't comfortable with the article um, without specifications. A lot of other things that we had brought up in the meeting. Um, select board, correct me if I'm wrong, Steve or Alicia, decided um, to accept, well, one of our requests um, outside of waiting till fall, because that was our number one thing that we wanted, we thought made sense, but they wanted to, they wanted this article in. So the, they made that decision. Um, but so they, they did add the bumped it from 10 million to 12 million per our discussion to give us a little bit more, um, flexibility. So we don't have to come back. Um, and they did add, obviously, if you saw the, the paragraph regarding the, 
the um, stabilization, being able to access those stabilization funds as well um, during that period. So um, I know there's a lot more to come on this by the end of the month, but I, I, any other update, Lisa, you want to give to this or Steve, um, just keep it on our minds each meeting until we can make a decision at the end of the month on what's going on. And I think Monday, a lot of our questions are going to get answered anyway. So hopefully um, we'll see, but. So on, on Friday, I was in a um, meeting with Anthony and Joe. And <clears throat> as we wound up the meeting, Anthony said he was going to sit in on a meeting with LLB, the architect. So I asked if I could sit in. Um, so it was a Zoom meeting, Anthony, Joe, myself, Liz, from EHS and the architects were on the call. And they went through and they have drawings for the uh, facility at the tennis courts. Um, not detailed drawings, just kind of a, a layout um, and what the, the building would look like. Um, they went through it all and basically said that this project's not going to be anywhere close to being done for at least nine months, probably close to a year. So that kind of cemented it in my mind that there's no reason to put dollars into this article is let's wait till the fall <clears throat> so they can cost the thing out and have a better idea what it's going to be. Um, but that's not how the selectmen saw it on Monday morning. Um, they were, they, they wanted a number in there. Uh, one of the things that they started to talk about was, um, are we going to, by not putting a dollar amount in there, are we going to not be able to take advantage of the lower interest rates before the Fed hikes? Stuff we talked about. Yeah. We, we, again, told them, and, and what Alicia had said before is, this isn't going to affect us. I mean, we, we're not going to be able to borrow anytime sooner um, before interest rates go up. It's just not possible. <clears throat> um, I met with George Sanders, who wrote that initial, initial letter. I met with him, Alicia and I met with him Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever it was, um, and explained it to George. So he was fine with it. He understood. Um, he kind of still wanted a number in, in the article, but you know, we told him it, it might not work and let's wait till we get a better number. But the selectmen were unanimous in, in wanting to put a number. They did bump it to the um, 12 million to give a little bit more wiggle room, but um, they weren't about to wait until the fall. So I think in the long run, it's not going to hurt. Um, Uh, whether it's there or not, uh, we, we might have to go back if, if the project's going to come in more. I mean, there's no way to tell if, you know, costs are just going to keep increasing and increasing before, you know, nine months to a year from now, we're ready to go. We just don't know. Um, in the fall, we have maybe a little better idea, but, you know, they wanted a number. So, It'll be good to hear the architects say it for themselves Monday night. Um, I'd encourage questions about the timeline from anybody here just to iron it down so we get it in my mind, getting in our minds what uh, they're talking about and what the real timeline is. Because there's a lot of steps. I mean, you know, we're building a building is not, you know, there's biddings and everything else that has to be gone, gone through and drawings they have to do and you know, get to 80% drawings to, to get it out there. So, um, again, we'll meet with them on Monday and hear what they have to say. But it's yeah. like we're moving forward with the dollar amount. Yes. You've also got an eminent domain uh, play here, too, that's going to add some time to the project as well, right? Which, right. We, don't, which we don't normally deal with when we're when we own the property in whole in total. Yeah, this is all explained. And I, you know, I think, um, 
like I said, a, after our discussion, I, I, you know, I got a sense definitely that our board wasn't, com wasn't comfortable with the article in general. Um, they did take our rec at least take our recommendations knowing that they, um, they were going to put this article forward. That, that, that was definitely um, apparent. So knowing that, uh, you know, as a, <laughs> as a finance committee, I think it, it was, it behooved us to, all right, if you're going to put this forward, let's find out the best way to do it. And I think the 12 million, um, it, I'm glad they did that at least. Um, but even that we're throwing a number out there, right? <laughs> so, yeah. but it gives us a it gives us more flexibility. Um, it gives us more time. Um, you know, hopefully we don't have to come back to town meeting for more money. And that was probably our biggest concern when we're, when we're talking about this, but um, be as it may, it's a select board article. They're putting it forward and we will vote the more information we get uh, next week. And then hopefully by the time town meeting is, um, hopefully we can vote at the end of the month. If not, we'll vote on the floor right before town meeting if we have to. I, I don't want to pressure anybody into this without knowing all the information we can possibly gather. So, um, Mary, is it always yeah. a either um, we either support it or we don't, or is there any kind of middle ground where we, you know, support the article as far as um, wanting to have the senior center um, and, and way doing it, but just that we're not supporting that these numbers are necessarily um, yeah, it's you know accurate. Is that something? It's tricky. Um, you know, we we want to support the select board in their their articles more so. Whether you vote against it or not, as a citizen, right? Mm -hmm. As far as a, the finance committee goes, we're trying to make the de best decisions, right, on what we think um, going forward. Now, if we were to say say we voted against this in a you know majority voted no we would definitely have to stand up and explain why we voted against the article and what our thought process was. Um, and that's something that we would have to do, but there, we could, we could request an amendment. I mean, as a board, um, amending it to what we said, maybe potentially get crafty. I would want that definitely done before town meeting. Um, all that being said with articles like this, I, I personally really like to be in sync with the select board. I don't like, um, it's, it's such an important article for so many people that if you go to town meeting and there's, and we're pulling each other back and forth, it's a bad look and it potentially could hurt the project in general. So even though many of us might support the article, I mean, the, the, the project, um, we could actually be hurting this you know, so hopefully we have we have a month to work with the select board, maybe to even add an amendment to this by the time town meeting comes around. So I'm, I don't think that's out of the question. Um, we didn't really talk a whole lot about that. I, I, I think at the end of the month, we should once we have all the information we can get. Um, whether we're really uncomfortable, if we don't think we can we can go ahead with what they've requested on here then we can, we can have that serious discussion. Okay, how would we like to amend it? Um, so we'll probably do a, a roll, a vote um, later in the month and just see where we land after we get all the information. And if we're not there, then let's find out what makes everybody comfortable. Um, and if we can't get to that point, <laughs> then unfortunately we're not going to be able to support the article as, as a committee. And that's... Yeah. Good. Mr. Chair, so, may I add a, a couple of comments? Yeah, please. So the select board also wanted to pass it because it wanted to show commitment so it could go for a state earmark. That's one reason why they passed it. Um, and there's also two hands up in, for attendees that want to speak. Sure. I, we'll get to them. Um, thank you for that, because that was something that uh, select board member Glavy did bring up. Um, the possibility of whatever percentage chance that is um, of a potential grant, right? Or we have, you know, the town now is committed and maybe something comes in between now and then where we can apply for some money because we've already uh, committed. What is that percentage chance? <laughs> it's probably pretty low, but I can tell you that there's probably people in town that would say if it's even 1%, it's worth a shot. So you've got to kind of look at both sides of that even, right? So. And I, I would say, 
you know, putting $5 million into a dedicated stabilization account yeah. to show in commitment. Yeah. And it yeah. doesn't need to be a borrowing article. Yeah, to do that. Right. So, so yeah. on, on the, the good news uh, for the, that presentation that I saw, um, like I said, Liz was on the call. And she was very happy with the layout of the of the building, which was great news. Um, so it's it seems like it's fitting the needs that she's envisioned for her department. So that was good news. Yeah, and I don't want to dig too deep into this because we're going to get a lot more information definitely next Monday, and then probably the two weeks following. You know, of what probably more information on this. So, but um, Tyler. Yeah, no, ju I mean, j just two thoughts, right? I mean, I, I watched the recording from the meeting on, on, on Monday morning, right? So for, first of all, thank both of you for, for kind of giving your time and explaining kind of our position. That was, that was great. Um, you know, I guess I'm, I'm surprised but not surprised that the article was inserted with the changes, right? I mean, again, you know, one of the, one of the concerns of Selectman, um, Select Board um, mentioned, which I agree with, right, is, is not wanting to go into town meeting with, you know, lack of consensus here, right? And I thought we had a really good opportunity to go into town meeting with a consensus supporting um supporting an article you know with those modifications and the opportunity to modify it you know down the road if we, if the numbers kind of clarify and we got enough data to support it and so I'm, i guess I, that, that's the point that it was a little surprising and disappointing that you know now we're not now you know where we could have supported the article modify we're we're, we're now kind of in a in, in a period of waiting for the next month to see if we can get there um but but that being said i mean you know it's great to hear this presentation hopefully we'll uh We'll progress and get to a point where you know kind of our two concerns can be addressed right the, the the number on the plan and then you know still still struggling a little bit with you know outside of you know potentially showing commitment you know just just without the ability to borrow it just seems counterintuitive to me to have a power article um but, but again maybe we'll all get there over the next month yeah they're, they're gonna have the 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 architects gonna have the rough costing of the project by the end of the month that's huge i mean that's a big yeah. deal for us. That's, so um, you know, at the like I said, once we get there, we'll cross that bridge. Maybe, maybe the select board. This wouldn't. This isn't a very difficult article, um, since they put in the information we wanted. It's not a very difficult ar article just to strike the twelve million the sentence all the way down. We just get. We just go all the way down to the five million, right cap. You know, the stabilization, and go with it. Yeah. So, we'll, maybe we'll get to that. Um, maybe we'll have good numbers and, and 12 million looks like it's, oh, it's, it's going to work for us. And then we're, we're all happy, but um, we'll see more to come on that. For sure. Okay. All right. We had I, a, go I ahead. have one question before we go public here. I, I have not watched the meeting from yesterday. I haven't had a chance to do that. You say the select board was unanimous is all five select board members in favor of this or is it, is it split somewhere? No, it wasn't split. Uh, Miss Napoli was not in attendance. Um, Okay, so it was an, abs an abstinence. So, okay. so all four members were with with changes that we that we had added. They, okay, they, that, that's, that's all I wanted to know to confirm that. That's all. Thanks. All right. Um, I just want to make sure. So I hope the questions we'll we'll bring in um, anybody who's out there that wants to speak we, to, directly to the article. I think we can go to public now. I think that was our last update, I believe. Hello? Yes. We've got two coming in. So, uh, Miss Emily Murphy, is that, is your handle your name, I hope? <laughs> They had their hand up. Is that correct? Yes. Yep. Emily was first and Megan was second. So I promoted them both. Okay. Emily, did you have a question or some information? Okay, we're gonna oh, you're yeah, you're on mute, Emily, if you're trying to talk yet. Yeah, you need to unmute yourself. Hi, this is Megan Ford. Okay. 28 Shattuck Street. I was just unmuted. Okay. Hi. Hi, Megan. I had my hand up. Um, so I wanted to just ask what the process is to request that 31 Shattuck Street or the eminent domain be removed from this article. Um, you guys were talking about an amendment, but could removing that part of it be your amendment? Because it just seems like the 
they're putting the cart before the horse committing to these this finance with with no real design quite yet um i know that it was mentioned that there were preliminary drawings but has there been an official site plan review um like a like a like a design review done on on the 31 shattuck street idea yeah I, I i can't speak totally to it maybe alicia can but i i know they did some digging out there to, testing wise but um what you what you're mentioning uh, megan is some of the things that our board had a initial issue with is without seeing a design we're a little uncomfortable right now at least mm -hmm. um but it sounds like we're going to be getting a little bit more detailed design uh, to the project. Um, referencing your question about removing um, that front part, I don't think that site will even work. So either this whole thing goes, <laughs> um, or it that's going to be a that'll be a showstopper if 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 we. Well, that wasn't there an original plan that it would be at a different location? Is that completely? out of the question now can we can we still promote a new senior center but just keep 31 shattuck street out of it for now so through the chair the yep. um the building that was proposed in a different location was much more expensive than 31 shattuck and the eminent domain is a friendly eminent domain it's, it's well, not like i beg i beg to differ it might be friendly with the owner but not necessarily with the people on in the neighborhood um i live across the street and i we have a very tight-knit group of neighbors on this street and we're not really happy to hear that a house that we were expecting a family to move into is now going to possibly go to a nonprofit, and a driveway could potentially be abutting a across the street from my driveway and next to my neighbor's driveway it just i would like to i would like to support a senior center but um, I am not in support of the location of 31 Shattuck Street. And um, so, you know, I think it, it's being called friendly in one aspect, but I think you might end up with some resistance from other people in, in town in, into that regard. Yeah, and I, I you know, you're probably right. Um, I, I think the select board is aware of a lot of these discussions and i think that's something definitely megan attend their their meeting and, and and express that um because that that is a concern with just another aspect of this when you put this many things into one article there's a mm -hmm. lot of potential pitfalls that people are going to disagree with so hopefully like i said that they can work with the neighbors uh with you and a design that you would be comfortable with well, we were not we were not even alerted to any of this. Um, it 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 was very disappointing to the neighbors that we did not receive any kind of heads up. I mean, I know by law you probably weren't required. The board of selectmen were not required to to tell us anything about this, but we saw the for sale sign going up and down, and we saw a lot of cars coming across the street. But the town, I, I think, as a courtesy, it would have been nice to give us a heads up that hey you know, we're just letting you know that this is going to be up, you know, as an article a town meeting, just a heads up, you're an interested a butter, a party, you know, an interested party, somebody that's abutting this property that um, we're going to take for eminent domain, that's normally a residential house. Um, so it's, we didn't get any word from the town. That's very disappointing. And, and it, you know, I think that good communication with the town and abutters to this eminent domain would, would have been step number one. And, you know, there's lots of issues that each one of us have different concerns about, but, you know, I, that's just something I wanted to bring to your attention as well as you make your, you know, consider your decision. Yeah. Thank you. And I, I, I definitely think attending, um, a select board meeting and bringing up, you know, some of those concerns, but also if this article passes in some form um, with the um, eminent domain, um, it has to go through a zoning change, which then you would be able to attend the zoning board meeting on the discussion on um, yeah. and the planning board. So we'd have, there's a lot of steps of, that I think you and, and residents in the neighborhood would, would definitely uh, be able to get more involved with in, hopefully come up with a, a better a plan like you'd mentioned a driveway i think is the driveway gonna have to be moved can it stay where it is 
Um, I know there was talk about putting land behind the, the house that the town owns, reshape it a little bit. Um, so every piece of land they take from the left side will go on to the back side. Um, so we'll see, but I know that's all more of the zoning piece and, and, and later on. There's definitely some things with this article, um, concerns that we have, and that's just one of them, but we definitely couldn't vote on it last week, but we're definitely going to give it our, our due diligence and, and wait to the last minute probably to, to make a... I have a general question. I don't mean to interrupt. This is my first time doing this. Sure. Emily, just give your, um, your full name and address, please. Sure. My name is Emily Murphy. I live on 27 Shattuck Street. Thank you. I, I lived on the street for 44 years almost and grew up in Littleton and I have family out of state and I was just was wondering, I know you can't ask, I just want to know what the, the best meeting, it sounds like next Monday would be the best meeting for me to gain a little bit more knowledge, any questions or concerns. Um, I don't want to take too much of your time. I just want to be kind of directed. I'm a neighbor of Megan and I agree the communication wasn't really there um i'm hoping to see so i i'm always for a senior center but i'm just not sure if it's next door is the best spot but um i would like to listen and have uh just get a more complex of information since again i'm just getting more knowledge of the town and all the town stuff and everything and just growing and learning so i'm not trying to point like any fingers just Kind of want to know what's the best time to have any questions or concerns in the next, you know, coming days and months. Yeah, I mean, us, us specifically, I mean, we're, we're dealing with the finance of this article. Um, right. and I, so I I'm glad you're here because it does, at least it, it, it is giving you a voice to speak to, you know, some of the project. But it's definitely more based for the, a select board meeting and, and then zoning after that. But okay. um, this, as far as the select board goes, um, I would, I would definitely attend that. You're going to have your voice heard there. You'll also, okay. also um, you'll get to see the actual architect talking about what that site will look like potentially. Okay. Once again, it, it might not be a, as firm as you want at that point. Um, you'll also be able to speak at town meeting on why you have some concerns, the same just mentioned. So okay. we, we understand your concerns. I, you know, I, unfortunately we're speaking directly to the finance piece of it, whether right. it work in um, but, but thank you definitely for, uh, for calling in with some of your comments. Thank you. All right. Thank you both. Thank you very much again. Thank you. All right, we had another hand up. It looks like, oh, there we go. Okay. Interesting. Uh, <laughs> looks like initials for the name. Do we have a, any are you there yes oh good okay sorry i didn't know what to put for if i'm putting my name on the top that's why it has those strange initials <laughs> um so my name is carol popolo my husband is beside me okay. john we live at 24 shattuck street there you go <laughs> um i grew up in the town and um, I'm almost 70, so I can actually say that I have nothing against a senior center. However, uh, by the way, uh, zoning per the town manager, who was not terribly helpful when I called him, uh, said that it uh, would not be changed, just so you know, uh, that it's still residential. Um, this street has increasingly since we came here over 30 years ago, to my husband and I moved to this house, um, has increasingly become more busy. When we moved in, we lived directly across from the path in the White House. Uh, it, there was just Pine Tree Park. And then the um, lower income housing was put in behind Pine Tree which increased the number of people on the road. Uh, there was nothing in the Shattuck Street building. The uh, Montessori school rented a spot uh, because at that time uh, the town was crying that 
the building couldn't be used for anything, which miraculously, it became the town hall and then the old library, which once again brought up how many cars are going to come down this street. It is a one-way road. People go down it the wrong way. There has been no study done by the by the selectmen. I will bring this up to them too. But they're looking for money from you. <laughs> they're yeah, looking from us. for no. the money. <laughs> Where's the money? <laughs> no, Carol, we're just trying to find the best way um, to finance this at the will of the town. You know, okay, town so meeting. so just letting you know that. Uh, so you know ahead of time, there's going to be a big fight about this within the town. And we will let the selectmen know. Yeah. Um, and we will bring up many things. But um, it's, not, it's not a friendly eminent domain. In fact, <laughs> the poor guy that owns, that owns the house currently has been taken advantage of by this town. Because he turned down an offer to take the towns. And they seem to be doing this very, very quickly. You know, suddenly we know we're going to put a senior center there because a house came up for sale. Yeah. So just so you know. <laughs> oh, Gil, Carol, a lot can happen in a month. And I, I, I appreciate you calling in with your concerns. Um, but I, like I had mentioned before, just... Absolutely attend select board meetings, zoning meetings, anything you can do, um, you know, to get your to get the point across. And, and I, I do realize that the sale of the property happened late. They were it, the select board wanted to get this done before town meeting. So that's probably what sped up a lot of this. Um, but where that's why they're trying to get it done quickly sure. and push everything through because they haven't thought this through. So I want to thank you very much for letting me speak. All right. Thank you, Carol. Good night. Good night. All right. So those, um, those are some of the comments I think we're going to see going forward. Obviously, all Shattuck Street residents have some, some viable concerns. That'll something that we'll let the select board <laughs> manage that. Um, I was expecting a tough finance question there, but hopefully <laughs> let us off the hook. Um, all right. Any other discussion, Alicia, do you have anything? Yes, so on Monday, Roselli Clark and Associates uh, CPA firm will be the new CPA firm to audit fiscal year 22, 23, and 24. So they're coming to introduce themselves and oh. have the engagement letter signed off on by the select board. So it'll be great for them to meet finance committee and the select board. Oh, fantastic. Okay, good. Um, Anything else from you? Not that I have at the moment, but if anything pops up, I will definitely let you guys know. All right. It does look like a 6.30 meeting uh, Monday, correct? Yeah. Correct. All right. Um, any Monday, any Monday, <laughs> any member updates from anyone that need to come before the board? Yeah, if I could, Mr. Chair, I'll throw one out there, right? Just um, if, if anyone's interested in being, you know, kind of the... Uh, the backup member or even the primary member of the transportation advisory committee um feel free to let me know that there's not a um there's not a secondary uh person there um and schedule wise it kind of happens the meetings are like five o'clock so i'm struggling a little bit with attendance with my work schedule so again if anyone's interested uh let me know i can tell you more about it great thank you tyler i i see we let another uh individual in it's that i did not it just popped up Miss Megan Diane, did you have a <laughs> public input? <laughs> can you hear me? I can. <laughs> okay. I was just trying to re-log back into the oh. meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any further comments. All right. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> um, oh, the world of Zoom and Teams. Of, um, all right. Any other member updates? Are we turn? Okay. Um, we did have some minutes. Did everybody look over the minutes by chance? Pretty extensive. All right, we'll hold off for our next meeting then on those. Just, we can look them over, right? Um, looks like that's all I have. So we, anybody has anything else, please speak up or otherwise I'll look for a motion to adjourn. 
So moved. All right. We have a motion. Second. Tom with the second. I'll go uh, roll call. Uh, Tyler. Uh, yes. Tom. Yes. Greg. Yes. Jerry. Yes. Al. Yes. And I'm a yes. And Steve. <laughs> Give me a thumbs up or a voice. You got, you're muted over there. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right. We are adjourned. Thank you. And thank you, Alicia. And thank you, LCTV. Have a good okay, night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you so much. Night. Have a great night. Good night, everybody. Good night.